back to the Simicult Network. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Hanto. And thank you for joining us this week. This episode as we talk about Silent Hill, the movie. Uh, this is a game all three of us I know love. We have played it together. That's how I know it. We played yeah. it like three years ago and never finished it. Was it that long ago? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was probably ballpark. Two years ago. Um, but I know we all have a history with this game. I think it's one of the creepiest terrifying. games I've ever played. When I was a kid, yes. terrifying. Yeah. It still holds up, though, when we were playing it. I feel like even all three of us in the room, we played it in the dark. And three, uh, three grown men could not so- solve simple puzzles. Oh, dude, no. honestly, that was the most fun I've ever had playing a video game in the past like five years was playing the puzzles in this game with you guys. Yeah, because we were all riffing off of each other and trying to solve the puzzles together. Kept cutting to the journal, and we were like, I think we brought even a notepad. We're like, write down this on the, yeah. on the journal. It was Yeah, it was really cool. But it was like, I feel like it held up um, as far as like, even past graphics. Mm. It was still really creepy to play. It, the graphics were rough. That oh, was it's hard. PS, it's yeah. PlayStation 1. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only thing I remember puzzle-wise was the ball and the drain. That's the only thing I can think of that stands out. Do you remember the piano? That we figured out. Um, I don't oh, know. Matt just motioned that he was playing a piano as if uh, it was my first time hearing the what word. What do you? <laughs> I uh, answer the question. <laughs> no, I don't remember the piano one. Okay. Oh, I, wait, I do yeah. kind of. Yeah. We all three figured it out together. Yeah. It was really cool. That's I just right. remember the note that was like, go to the famous monument where Arnold Schwarzenegger filmed that one movie, which is Kindergarten Cop. Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah. this, this school is based off of, I don't know if you've seen screenshots. The comparisons. The score is exactly. It's based off the 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 movie Kindergarten Cop. We should actually should uh, throw that up on the uh, Facebook because I think that's a really cool thing. Yeah, it's crazy. To, yeah, yeah, to compare them. Um, so let's go ahead and start talking about the movie. So Silent Hill came out, and I think it was two thousand eight. Two thousand six. Two thousand six. Okay. Um, let's talk about how much it costs to make this movie. My favorite part of the podcast, You're Honto. Ha- uh, forty million. Forty million, Matt. I'm gonna go with at least eighty. Okay, it was fifty million. Oh wow! Oh. Matt, you were the high boy. Um, <laughs> I was the high boy, but you won, right? Because like, are we? Do we round it or? It's pre- well, no, Matt, you were the high boy. You went too high. Who wins? Hanto. Okay. Yeah, because well, I, I went under. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, but you were. But cl- you get yeah. whoever's closest to the number yeah. without yeah. going over. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, price, price is right. right. Yeah. There you go. Um, how much does this make in the U.S.? Hanto. One hundred and ten million. That was really close, Matt. 90. 46 million. Oh. So, really? Yeah. <laughs> it was 46 million. Five <laughs> one. As soon as I said it, I was like, that's really close. Matt looked at me like, why did you just give it away? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how much did this make worldwide overall? $110 million. Oh, well, you're getting good at this. 120. 100. Just dollars? Yeah, hundred dollars. <laughs> I saw it ten times. <laughs> I figure it's got to be popular in Asia because this is a Japanese-made uh, game. Yeah, but actually, it's it did about the same here. It's, it was forty six here and fifty six over there. Okay. So I mean, it's not okay too different. Yeah. So uh, Hanta, why don't you talk about the cast and the crew of this Sean Bean vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> the leading role. Uh, this movie is direct, directed by Christoph Gans. Gans. Gans or Gans. Uh, I know him because I've seen the movie Brotherhood of the Wolf. I know the title. Oh, it, it came out in he theaters. Directed that? Yeah, it came. It was a French movie. Uh, it came out in theaters in like 2001 or 2000. I Do think. you remember this at all? I don't. It's I remember it was like, dude, it was huge. It's like a martial arts, like, Fren- it was huge. like almost like French Revolution era. Okay. But it's like a martial arts movie. But okay. it's like a horror martial arts. I know this movie because it stars, uh, co stars Mark Dacascos. And I know uh, him from a movie called Only the Strong, okay. which is like br- Brazilian martial arts movie from the early 90s. Okay. But he was also uh, the lead bad guy in John Wick 3. So I haven't seen that one. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, he's like the, okay. the guy that's yeah. in love with John Wick. I have never seen Brotherhood of the Wolf, but I remember that trailer being all over the place oh. when it came out. Because it's like, it's post-Matrix, right? It's Yeah, because it's like right around yeah. It's like martial arts is big. Yeah, it was like so, post-Matrix, post-Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah, because uh, I think and Crouching were just Tiger was like, 2000, I think. It's like another, like it was a... Uh, the big deal was like it's a foreign film. Yeah. Uh, but the trailers are all over the place here in the but, US. But uh, who's Not, the, I didn't mean to say huge. Yeah. Like, I don't even I don't even I've never who, seen the Who's movie. the French actor that's in uh Black Swan with Natalie Portman? He's like the dance, the instructor. dance instructor. Yeah. Uh, and he's also in like Irreversible with uh Monica Bellucci. I never saw that. Um, I know who you're talking about. Today. No, you're okay. I know, I know who you're, you're talking about. But though. he's like also in this the French movie. Oh, okay. But okay. you would probably know him because you've been trying to actively see one of his movies since October. Uh, he directed ne- Necronomicon, Book of the Dead. Did he really? Yep. 
Wow. Yep. <laughs> Dude, okay. I, yep. I, I talked about this on the. I talked about this before, right? Yeah. About how I can't talking, get a hold of this damn movie. I think we were talking about it in one of the, um, maybe in the Mouth of Madness or something. Yeah, and I still can't. Oh, I haven't looked at it recently, but uh, yeah, like I still haven't come across it. And yeah. there's only one half of it's online somewhere. Oh. <laughs> So legally, you, yeah. So you legally watched, uh, or illegally, I guess. I legally watched, watched half of this movie, and then uh, yeah. So yeah, that's those are the really the two movies that I know from this guy, um, starring Radha Mitchell. Uh, she plays the main character Rose. I know her from Pitch Black and Man on Fire, which is a awesome movie. See, I remember yeah. her from um, uh, Finding Neverland. Oh, is she in that movie? I think so. With, with Jay Depp. Now, as I say it out loud, I'm like, is she in that? I'm pretty sure she's in it. I don't think she is. I don't think she is either. Then Man on Fire Great. it is. <laughs> Leave the cast to me, please. <laughs> uh, also, Lori Holden, who plays Sybil, the police officer in this movie. Uh, she did a killing with uh, Frank Darabont because she was in The Mist. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Also starred in Walking Dead, mm-hmm. I think like seasons one to three. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she was also in The Majestic. Yeah, we were just talking about that the other night um, after we watched this. Uh, that's a movie I haven't seen in a while, but I remember really liking it. I have not seen that movie. Oh, really? Yeah, because okay. this is around the time it's Truman Show, right? Oh, uh, it's probably a couple yeah. years after. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was, was kind of like, like right off that same um, like the arc of like drive. Let's do serious movies. Yeah, it's honestly you would really like. It's it. a yeah, it's yeah. a really good. Well, and like, Darabont's a pretty solid actor, or yeah. director. Yeah. But uh, I really like her a lot, and I feel like she's we don't great. get to see enough of her in things, and I feel like she's very um, versatile. She pops up in the uh, Dumb and Dumber. Does she? No, oh. not at all. Why she are just, you? Just, I just feel like she looks you, like. Stay out of my she, <laughs> what are you doing? She looks like the girl from Dumb and Dumber, doesn't she? Which is Laura Hawley. Yeah. Don't they look kind of no, similar? No, they don't. You're yes, just they taking, do. you're, just, you're just taking the initials and you're like. Ponto, don't they look kind of similar? Like, uh, her name is Lori, and then uh, Laura. <laughs> hey, just need the cast to me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What were no, you gonna I, say? I, I really do like her, and I feel like like I liked her a lot when I when I was watching Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, Until Frank Darabont got sacked, and that show started eating shit. Yeah, that yeah. show is not good. Is it still on? It is still on. Yeah, and like you, get, whether you like it or not, someone likes it because they're on like season thirteen. So well, there's like, a movie too. There's apparently a movie. No, yeah, sitting. they're working on uh, like there's, a couple. It's, of there's movies. three movies, I think. Uh, there, but isn't there I, one that's filmed already that's just sitting because it was supposed oh, to come know. out this year? I well, know. I, I know what's his name. Um, the Major Lincoln. He signed on to three movies. Yeah, um, the, it's like the Rick Grimes trilogy. Yeah, and then and they just like, they just started a new Walking Dead show. So there's like three a, shows, and now. it's like teens in the Walking Dead universe. And they have Fear the Walking Dead. They have Walking Dead the show. Yeah. Um, this new one with the the teen, like the young adult. Yeah. You know, whatever. And then they got the three movies. I know they have like a couple games. And then uh, dr- I feel like um, it's that. I feel like with Walking Dead with AMC, it's like that uh, Simpsons clip where that kid's like, "Stop it! He's already dead!" <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. dude, people love it. So why wouldn't you? That's make why it? just yeah, beating every it to year death, man. At Hol- uh, Horrorhound, yeah, like yeah. all the people there are Walking Dead fans. But like it, it I, okay, yeah, people do love it, and I get it, and that's fine. They're allowed to love it, so I'm not going to knock on it too much. I just think that like for anything that I like, I want it to end. You know, like, it needs to end because it's I mean, fr- even, frustrating even when they the, all just die off. Even the comic book went on for way too long. Yeah, it, it finally ended like last year, I think. But it was like maybe like a hundred. No, 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 no. it's probably like two hundred issues. Really? And like the typical lifespan of a, a comic book is like seventy issues. Okay. And wow. it just went on way too long. long. Do you know um, who one of the the main actresses is on uh, Fear the Walking Dead? Which always blows my mind. Oh, I knew you were gonna say uh, Jenna Elfman. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if she's still on it. She but is in the she? new iteration. They yeah. they did like a complete revamp of that show uh, where they had like I guess the ratings were so bad they had to okay. like, figure out a new thing. So they're having like more fun. Okay, it's not as like self serious as the current version. Does she play the same character that she played in Kippendorf's Tribe? <laughs> <Is> <laughs> no, I think it's from uh, Can't Hardly Wait. Oh yeah, she. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an angel. You're a stripper angel. <laughs> Oh, I um, forgot she is in that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't watched that movie in years. I watched I just, it a couple months ago. I just watched it uh, over the weekend, actually. Really? This might be our <laughs> deepest like tangent yet, where we just keep going deeper and deeper into tears of like, oh, yeah, yeah. can't hardly late. wait. Like, when did you watch that right? last? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like, who are we talking about? <laughs> Lori, Lori Holden. No, Laura Hawley. <laughs> Laura <laughs> Hawley <laughs> from <laughs> The Walking Dead. Uh, okay, so I'm only on the third person for uh, <clears throat> this cast. and I But it's okay, because there's only like 10 in it. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Sean Bean, Scene Bean, as I used to call him when I was a kid. That's good. Keep you going. Call him that. 
I used to call him Seen Bean when I was like five years old. It was like around the time I saw GoldenEye for the first time. Okay. Uh, but yeah, GoldenEye is like a primo movie. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. probably my favorite James Bond movie. All right, I'll go on a tangent on this. Uh, Here we go. Sean right, Bean. You ready up, for it? Buckle up, guys. It's a two-hour episode. Sean Bean. Here's an actor I think is really, really awesome that... Um, Hasn't gotten his like dues yet. Yeah. like a lead actor. At one point, he was slated to be James Bond, which like... That kind of... That probably would have ruled, right? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember if it was around the Timothy Dalton years or if it was like between him and Pierce Brosnan. It had to have been before Pierce Brosnan because Dalton was done in like 89. Yeah. And then uh, Patriot Games was in like 1990 or 1991. Yeah. I, I just feel like he's a really, really good actor and... Um, oh, I, he, I, he levitates everything. He's yeah. Doing. And I... Uh, hot, hot cake... But uh, I feel remember it's our we remember the joke from nope. a couple episodes back. We didn't say hot take. We say hot cake. I have no idea. I can't remember. Nope. You guys remember that we say hot cake. <laughs> Doesn't sound the Christmas episode. We say hot cakes the whole episode. <laughs> Doesn't Anyways. sound familiar to me. Go uh, check out the YouTube episode. <clears throat> hot take. Uh, I feel like he should have led this movie. Oh yeah, because the thing with this story is that his character in this movie is the main character that we play as in the game. Well, okay, so is it? The, yeah, it's just they changed up the name of the characters, but he's essentially oh, the what? guy. <laughs> well, no, what? It's, it's, the it's the same. It's the same. It's not. It's, no, just... it's the same first. No, if, if his look, name's not the same, is his name the same? Yeah, it's the same. Like first oh, name. Okay, they just right. slightly changed the, the the last name. All of, the letters. Yeah, the, um, <laughs> from be, from the first name to the last letter of the last name, they changed yeah, every letter and remove that name from the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's the flip, same character. <laughs> flip around, do like a Russian roulette of you know character names. Because I will say this. Uh, uh, I feel like this movie would benefit from having um, a, like, there's not enough male horror films where the male is, like, the one that's in danger. Like, Evil yeah. Dead. Yeah. And that was the whole push for Evil Dead was, like, instead of the final girl for Evil Dead, it was uh, it was going to be, like, a final guy. Okay. Wow, so, I can't believe you didn't bring this up on the episode. I did. I brought did. it up. Um, but, like, it'd be kind of cool to see that more of, like, a, a uh, there's not enough, like, male driven horror films where it's just them like yeah. isolated and, ironically like, enough really scared you sound like the producers of this film because i guess um he was only supposed to be at the very beginning and the very end and that was it just like a few scenes yeah yeah but they said they wanted more male in this um not like m-a-i-l more but male. we want male <laughs> we want male but no and then so they did all these additions of him like trying to hunt her down and everything which yeah. wasn't supposed to happen originally really? but they wanted a male to be more in the lead so. Yeah, and it's nothing against um, our lead actress at all. I like her a lot. Oh, no, it was she's just really good. Yeah, I just think like we don't we don't see enough of that in like horror movies, and that was kind of like the the uh, the one thing that like the Silent Hill game had. Yeah, was it was like even Resident Evil had Jill Valentine as mm-hmm. like uh, but as the lead in the first Resident Evil. You could switch off either. You could either pick Jill Valentine or Chris Redfield. So you could either pick. Oh yeah, you could female or I male. always picked Jill Valentine. Yeah, because she started with all the best shit in that game. Yeah. Um, I'm actually okay. I prefer. I think that's one of the reasons I really like horror films that they are female led. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I'm not saying so. like all. I'm just saying it's no. just like the one opportunity yeah. where I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool what? to see like uh like a, like a male in a horror like a supernatural. Yeah, that's why I think like the thing stands out. Yeah. Is because it's just an entire male cast, and it's like you're watching these like like dudes basically like it's supposed to be tough dudes, and they're all like freaking out. Which yeah. Is awesome. Over all the the elements. But you like, know? and on my side of this because. Uh, the game is so awesome. I wish they would have just stuck to the source material. They just altered it slightly. And I think the either the producers or the creator of the game has, has stated that this is like basically a revamp of the first game, but it's like in an alternate universe or whatever. Okay. Because it is essentially the same. It's almost a carbon copy of the first game, basically. Mm. Yeah, I think so. so. Um, let me ask you. Oh, you got the cast. I'm sorry. Keep going with the cast. I apologize. Um but we also know from Game of Thrones, Patriot Games, Lord of the Rings. What year did uh, Monkey Bone come out? Uh, why, you ask? Was it 99? Uh, like 99 okay. or, yeah, why? Nothing, just keep going. You're fun. I was just curious. Keep really? Going. Yeah, you're fun. Okay, cool. Uh, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kim Coates, known from Sons of Anarchy, Goon, which is an awesome movie. Uh, I saw in Precinct 13, the remake, which we've talked about several times on this podcast. Um, and The Last Boy Scout. Which we've also talked about in this podcast. Did we do an episode on that? No, we talked about it. I we know we, we did. Uh, we did a. Uh, we're gonna do a, what's his name? Um, a Tony Scott month. I no, think. it was the director. Oh, the Shane Black. Yeah, yeah Shane, uh, Shane Black month because we did that for uh, Long Kiss Goodnight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but we saw him at a uh, Whorehound first year that we went there. 
Um, and then we have an actress named Els- Alice Krieg, who's like basically the main villain of this movie. Uh, she's in probably one of the best Star Trek movies, Star Trek First Contact. Never seen that one. Really? As much as I love Star Trek, I haven't, I've only seen Generations. It's out pretty, of the... pretty badass. Really? It's basically like where they have the Borg. It's like a zombie, almost like mm-hmm. zombie. Yeah. Zombies in a Star Trek movie, which is awesome. But I just saw her recently in uh, the movie Gretel and Hansel. Okay. Which is, she's pretty awesome. Oh, movie. okay. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, I was trying to figure out what I knew her from. I hadn't seen. In Sleepwalkers. She's in Sleepwalkers. Is she? Isn't that Stephen King? Uh, just, that's Stephen King. Yes. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I always get okay. I always, even though I know the difference between Sleepwalkers and Cat People, mm-hmm. I get those two movies mixed up so often, right? Because they're like because they're, they're spelled the same but with different letters. Yeah. No, but they're like <laughs> they came out around roughly the same time, like that early. Or no, because Cat People is like eighty. Yeah, that's Cat People is like eighty eight. Like, I think it's like early eighties. Like yeah. Oh, it is eighty two. You're right. Yeah. It's eighty two. Because then Sleepwalkers is what. Uh, it's nineties, ninety one sure. or ninety two. Okay, then never mind, man. I'm yeah. just, I'm just, I'm just dumb. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I have for cast and. Who? Um, do you know who wrote this? Um, I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> I do. Are um, you? Is it Monkey Bone? I don't know. <laughs> Bring it up. Um, written it's... by uh, Roger Avery. Okay. Who wrote Pulp Fiction? Interesting. He's, yeah, he's yeah. other. Well, I think, and he also. He like wasn't credited, but I want to say he wrote Reservoir Dogs too. I've seen his name. I've being, heard like, that. Like, and then, but his, mo- I think his big movie that he did on his own was um, Killing Zoe. Yeah, Killing Zoe. Oh, Killing yeah. Zoe uh, with uh, oh Eric Rules Stoltz. of Engagement or uh, oh yeah, the, um, um, Rules of Attraction. Rules of Attraction. I was oh. Rules of Engagement. Yeah, based off of the same author as American Psycho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Freddie okay. Snells. Um, but yeah, he uh, and I think I don't think he did the sequel. I don't think he came back for it. But yeah, that spoiler movie, there's a sequel. Yeah, the sequel to Silent Hill. Not good. I watched it. I, did you? Okay, recently? October. I wanted oh, to yeah, talk yeah. about October. This. It is atrocious. Is really? it? it is horrible. Huge, like uh, a decent cast, too. But it's like weird. another yeah. uh, Game of Thrones because uh, Kit Harrington yeah. is the, the secondary actor to okay. star in. And then Malcolm um, McDowell. Um, oh, it's terrible. Malcolm McDowell's in it? It's terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Really? Um, I mean, if you're on a roll with Silent Hill after watching this, try it. And uh, I guarantee you're not going to like it. Cool. You persuaded me. Cool. Sold. Before we get into this movie, I want to ask real quick because I didn't ask it earlier. What do you think this has on Rotten Tomatoes? Tomatoes. Ponto. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. What do you got? Uh, 58. Matt. I'll go with a 40. Ponto. 31%. Wow. Really? Yeah. So um, I don't want to say what I'm going to give it, but yeah, we'll, we'll just get into the movie. You know, I will say this, though, before we get into the movie. Out of all three of these movies that we've watched... Uh, not too far off from their video game uh, counterparts. Oh yeah, this like, is like they're yeah. all really close. I, I've noticed that we didn't really talk about that with Mortal Kombat or Tomb Raider, we, and we, we're probably we, not going to say we, this. We briefly talk about it, at least with Mortal Kombat yeah. because of like what what can they do with it? Because yeah. the game is literally just pick a fighter and uh, let him fight. But it's just not like n- not one of these three is as like far off as say like Street Fighter is. Yeah. Or like Mario Brothers is. Oh, right, right. Like yeah, they're yeah. pretty close. Like yeah, yeah there one, might be some differences here and there. Yeah. Um, the aesthetics of the game are <clears throat> very present in this movie. And yes. It's kind of awesome. This is I think I would say this is our closest one to the actual video game. I will I'm say sorry, it's yeah. probably the closest just in general with video game adaptations. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um I, w- I will say before we get into this, or as we get into it, dude, this movie is like 35 minutes too long. It, I agree. This running time this, destroys I, the movie. I think I was telling you guys this when we were discussing uh, whether or not to do this movie. Yeah. And I was telling how I watched it back in October. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest issue that I have with this movie is that it's way too long. It's it, it's like, I think it was two hours and five minutes, but it feels like two hours and seven minutes. What they have to do is they have to cut out the, the Sean, the scene being uh, scenes of this movie. Yeah. Scenes. Oh, yeah. you can take them out of this whole movie and yeah. it, it would play exactly and the same And they got to get rid of like the big, uh, reveal at the end where it's like, let's do all these flashbacks and I'll tell you the story of silent Hill. Well, uh, let's just go into the movie because yeah. I do, I do. Yeah. I want to totally talk about this. So the movie starts off and it starts off with the theme from silent Hill and it's really cool, it's cool. but it's a shame because then we play it for like five seconds and then that's it. Yeah. But the score is the original silent Hill score is, uh, prevalent through the entire movie oh, i yeah, think it's the yeah, same yeah. composer from what i read yeah. it's the same composer okay so they had a new composer come in uh but they the director wanted the score from the video game mm-hmm. in the movie uh so he just had this composer remix the score from the video oh, okay. game okay. because they were like he was like obligated to give i guess this composer a job 
Oh, okay. As opposed yeah. to just ripping the entire score. So the score from the video game is technically in the movie. The soundtrack, That's I mean, cool. the score is awesome yeah it's like industrial great. you know kind of yeah. nine inch nails ask and it's great dude that scores is that score is like one of the most intense scores because oh it's gosh. so erratic yeah. yeah like it'll be like smooth and like calming and then it's like yeah and you're just like <laughs> it's really intense it's yeah when you're especially like in the game when you're like in these dark places rusted industrial settings and you got this like crazy music playing yeah it, it definitely it definitely makes this movie better uh, but the movie starts off and we have this couple, and they're trying to find their daughter, who is a sleepwalker. And she walks over to like the edge of this cliff, and they're like completely like worried about it. And this is like the start of the movie. The whole reason this yeah. movie happens. Yeah. And I guess the girl says Silent Hill. Yeah, like sleep. she has to go home. Like Silent Hill, Silent Hill. You know, and you're just like, okay, here we go. And so the mother's like, all right, I gotta take her to I Silent Hill. Take her. That's like his dad going. And she's like, no. Which yeah. I don't understand. If it was that big of a deal, I would have think right. Sean B. Well, to the point it. where she's about to jump off a freaking waterfall. Like, yeah, something yeah. a little bit more is going on here. Um, so she ends up taking her daughter. And what, what's the main character's name? Uh, is it Rose? Rose. Rose. So Rose takes her daughter, and they head off to go to the Silent Hill or whatever. Yeah. And along the way, there's just some, like, the dialogue in this movie just feels so, like, unnatural. It's, like, stilted at times. A lot of, it, a lot of the, um, the dialogue between Rose... And the cop yeah. is very, like, I don't it, know. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like dubbing. For, it's like a foreign film that's been dubbed into English. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. it's kind of, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's like, disjointed. Yeah. Well, it sounds like, like, it sounds like, forth, when, you, like when you play a video game and they walk up and yeah. like, it, it sounds, like, where are you going? You know, like, yeah. it's very, it yeah. just doesn't feel natural. Rose, we have to get out of here. And, yeah. <laughs> and so, they kind of meet up. They have an interaction, her and the cop. And later on, the cop follows her in the Silent Hill. Yeah. And as she follows her, they get into a wreck. And Rose wakes up. Her daughter's gone. And you're are like, they in Silent Hill at this point? You're basically, yeah. Because yeah, as they're driving, she almost hits a kid in the road who looks exactly like yeah. the daughter. Uh, basically gets knocked out, wakes up, and then they're already in Silent Hill because you got the ash falling from the mm-hmm. sky. Completely foggy town. And something's not quite right. I wish... It was a little bit foggier in the town. Like, I know for, like, cinematic standpoints, like, you have to be able to view the city. Yeah. But the yeah. game is so cool when you're walking, and you literally can't see anything. Well, yeah. it's like, a, and it's because it's loading. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The parts of the camera loading. Yeah. It's the reason why you can run around in the town is, like, it's foggy because, like, the next, like, spot where you're it's running like into is loading. Rendering, it's rendering, 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 yeah. rendering. You're in a rendering fog. Yeah. But it works. It, and it, it works, too, when they turn on the flat. I, okay, I'll say this. Uh, Because we're gonna get into the first time the alarms go off. Yeah, in the town, and the town goes, and the town goes dark. Uh, Anytime they light like a flashlight or a match or a lighter or whatever, like it's so damn bright. It's like too bright around them. Yeah, and you can see too much, and it's kind of goofy. Like especially those times when they she has the flashlight and she's moving around, and it's like, well, if we know from just like it's like out, she looks like she's outside like on a bright sunny day, but she's like I can't see anything without the flashlight. And it's but like if we if we've we've ever driven in fog before, like turning on your lights is it makes it harder to see almost. Like especially if you turn on your brights. Yeah, it actually, like makes it really, really difficult to yeah. see around. So. Yeah, well, well, and what he was saying too, as far as like even when they use it indoors, yeah, like that light just like illuminates. Turning on a flashlight, it's like turning on all the lights in the building. It looks like right, yeah. right. Well, yeah, that's just in general, like you know, but just movies, I which feel is like. like any horror movie you see where it's like, but they walk around just, in the the pitch black darkness, yeah. or the woods or whatever. But they, you can clearly see everything. Yeah, but it's like it's. Not dark enough. Yeah. Because the great thing about the video game. Oh, yeah. You, is you that rely when on. It, 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 once it gets dark in the video game, yeah. you're like relying on that light. And yeah. it's like this like six foot radius around you, what you can actually see and yeah. can't. And, and then it's, it's scary as and hell. It's terrifying when you hear like footsteps, but you can't see that far ahead. And then yeah. you're already getting attacked by a, a kid with a knife or yeah, a, like a dog. In the, or... in the movie, there's too much that's seen. Yeah. Like even this this scene coming up with the the baby creatures chasing her, like you can see across the entire courtyard of all these babies yeah. chasing her, but she she can't act, she acts like she can't see like two feet in front of right. her. I think that's the and I think and too I much think, light. I think that's the biggest difference between why well, it's like hard to to direct like a video game adaptation is because like uh, for video games, you know, you're only in the perspective of the character, whereas like in a movie, they they really like make everything. You know, they reveal everything for 
the viewer themselves. You're not getting the same perspective as the character, which yeah. is what they probably should have done. Yeah, know? I mean, yeah, first, like I was saying earlier, the cinematic viewpoint, like, you have to, you can't just follow behind a character the entire time. Yeah, do, like, a third person over the shoulder. Right, yeah. You know, like, mo- cameras moving as they turn, you know. Didn't they do a movie like that, where it was, like, you're in the movie. You're like, you're the star. Doom? They, and, oh, no. You know, they do it sometimes. They do it a second in Doom. They do it, yeah. yeah, they do the first, but they do it Hardcore Henry. Hard, that's what I was thinking. Of, I watched yeah. that. Is it a good? Little, uh, a little drunk really? <laughs> in, the, in the theater with a buddy of mine. Okay. And it was a blast. Was it? Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. it was, you know, just be prepared. If you are if you have motion sickness, really? you're probably going to spew. <laughs> cool, thanks. Um, so this is our first like, encounter, because literally for like the first like 40 maybe even an hour and 15 minutes of this movie, it's just her running into monsters, doing something, yeah. running into monsters. And so let's just go through and talk about these monsters. Okay. Um, she gets chased by the, like these like babies that are like in, in fire. In the in the video game, they're in the school. They're actually the kids in yeah. the school, uh, but they chase her around with knives, or they okay. chase the main character. In this, they took the knives out and said made them like, like flaming children, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I don't mind it. Yeah, um, Matt didn't like it. I know that. I didn't have a problem with it. I'm, okay, I'll say this one time, but the thing that ruins this movie is the CGI. Oh, yeah. The yeah. CGI they do, and cripples they... this movie so so much that uh, it just it, it becomes, like, not unwatchable, but, like, it just takes you out of any of the extreme violence that yeah. happens in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, any of the extremely creepy creature effects. Right. It just doesn't bother The nurse me scene's the best scene. The which one? The nurses. Oh yeah, it's they're great. real nurses. Yeah, the the behind the scenes clip of that that sequence and how they filmed it is awesome. Yeah, so I will say that getting in like, and that's the only time I'll say it. Or maybe the first time I'll say it throughout the podcast. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna yeah. hold back, but I'm not going to. But I will give Unchained. them props because they do use a lot of practical effects in this movie, and when they use practical, the movie really shines, in my opinion. Yeah, because um, there's some awesome visuals. But the visuals are just, they just kind of get dampened by time. Yeah. Um, this movie is what? How old is it? Uh, 12 years? 13 yeah. years old? Uh, 14. Yeah, and it just feels like it's like it's so quickly outdated because of the how heavy the CGI is. Yeah. I think that's probably why they're relying on darker scenes, you know, at times, is to try to mask the CGI and how bad it is. Well, okay, so as we go on throughout the movie, when the siren goes off, and everything goes to like the town, goes like black. I think it's what they call it like other world. I think yeah, is what it's what they like call it in the game. D- yeah. it's basically like a, almost like a mirror image of the world. There's like basically a, three worlds in Silent Hill, at least in this movie. You got the real world with Sean Bean and the officer he's like patrolling with. Okay, and then you got which doesn't make any sense, but go ahead. Yeah, but then yeah, because they never do it in the game, but so whatever. No, I know we'll get and we'll get to to the end with the. I want to talk about the officer that is with him in the officer, in the movie. Officer, go for it because officer honestly, Gucci. I'm not going to really bring up Sean Bean again because there's no point. So. Well, yeah. this officer later on, and we'll talk about it later on, but he makes no sense within this world. But go I, ahead, yeah. keep going. So I won't bring three, him up again. No, if you have something to say, no, like, no, we're Sean we'll, as, we ta- as we talk. Hold about the it, phone. Three, three <laughs> worlds. Go. Real world, Sean Bean and Officer Gucci, uh, and then you got Silent Hill, which is where Rose is, and then you got the world it transforms into, which is other world, aka Hell. Yeah, I guess yeah. it is kind so of. So those are like the three yeah. worlds that you have going on. But go ahead with your Sean Bean dilemma. Um, well, this guy, like at the end, we find out that this guy is from Silent Hill. Oh yeah, he, he talks yeah. about he's like that's where my dad used to have barber shop. But no, he's legitimately from Silent Hill. Yeah. like he has his hands are burned. He he has involvement with the burning the of, little girl. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. So it makes no sense for his character to be in the real world. And by the end, I of think the movie, he escaped. That's right? what I mean. By the end of the movie, spoiler alert. Yeah, like of what happened. I told like, you. Yeah, how actually, did he get out of Silent Hill? That's a really good point. And they never, Because like, I don't think everybody died, obviously, but, like, he's one of the, probably the few that escaped the fires that happened. I don't know. I can't remember it's how confusing. close this is yeah. to the video game, but they don't, I will any, say... Any of the stuff, with the real world, yeah. throw that out and focus on Rose and Silent well, Hill, yeah. then that's the game. Well, even, like, the movie itself, this plot is so 
overdone. Yeah. Like at one point when they get towards the end of the movie and they explain what's going There's on. several flashbacks. It's like a 15 minute like old reel. It's like, yeah. And then this happened and then this happened yeah. and this happened. I'm yeah. like, dude, this felt like a straight video game. Yeah. It's, watching it's, that, it's, yeah, that, it, that. And they reel. do, yeah. they do that in the game at times, but yeah. like they spread it out. Not, they don't like give you the whole story in one, yeah. one chunk. Of it didn't game. transfer well to film. No, I don't, no, no, I didn't, no. it was too much. That, and this is the part that I had trouble with when I did my viewing in October where it's like this sequence. I'm just like, I'm lost because they just, I'm, bored by it yeah well when you're an hour and a half into the movie at this point and you're kind of like all right let's wrap it up right and then you cut to this you're like i don't want but this I history to lesson i yeah. have to explain this and part. that's like the classic thing they always tell you like show don't tell when it comes mm. to like yeah mediums like that and that's all they do is they just tell they're like and then this happened because this in, did this. in the and games because i played the first four okay there's a bunch there's a there's like probably eight or nine of them or okay. something but uh the the story in the games at least was like they always kind of leave it up to the viewer to kind of de de decipher what Silent Hill actually is. And in the games, it's always like Silent Hill is created by the main character that you're playing as. Like they are creating this world. Okay. And it's a form of like torment or whatever. But in the movie, they have, of course, have to spoon feed the audience of like what's going on. And we yeah. don't need that to happen. And that's well, exactly what happens. As yeah. far as structures go with stories like this, uh, they rely so heavily on, questions to get to the backstory exactly you know what i mean yeah. they have to like you have to be cause, in this... like cause and effect yes yeah or effect and cause or, yeah i guess yeah. yeah yeah effect or it's... here's the effect what is the cause yeah you exactly know? and they, and it's led up to like that third yeah that uh that third part where it's like here's the the how to reveal it yeah but i will say it, it is very thin from how she gets from like I think she starts off at the hotel. No, she starts off at the school. Yeah, it's no. um. <laughs> Where does she start? She starts start off. Start with cause. What is the? <laughs> yeah, she starts off at like how she gets from like whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna riff. She gets off. She gets from the school to the hotel to S the church. School is definitely the first because the first like real monster you see is Colin. Yeah, who's a janitor that apparently like molested the the daughter or the Alessa or whatever. Yeah, in the movie. And then from there, I think she meets up with the officer again. They meet up with the church people in the church, and then that takes them to the hotel. Um, well, and now, then they go back to the church. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, they go to the hotel, they go to the church, right? Because she finds That's the hotel said. key yeah. in, in the, his throat. Yeah. And it's real, it's, it's kind of those things it's, where it's, it's like. It's your typical, I, like, uh, you know, in the game, there would be like a fixed perspective camera angle. Yeah. And the, the body would be lifting, you know, doing its thing. And you see like a little, shine, like a, a an item shining. Yeah. Yeah. Thing, like point of interest. And you're, oh, oh that's, yeah. That's totally yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it's one of those things where watching it, I can't help to think about like the, mo I, I'm going to say monster. Yeah. But like the monster's perspective, it's like. Uh, why would you send this woman on this wild goose chase around your town just so you could tell her the backstory on you? Oh, because the girl basically is yeah. like the... Because she says it in the backstory. The little girl's like, you followed my clues even though they were yeah. blah, blah, blah. She's like, you went from the school to the hotel Why didn't you here. literally just tell me when yeah. I got here? <laughs> I know. It's like, why didn't you just like, instead of having Pyramid Head chase me or yeah. any of your minions... I'm not like, wearing the right you... shoes right now. My feet kind of hurt. Dude. I'm, I'm parched. I have work in the morning. <laughs> I'm parched right now. It's like, what if I would have died? Then you would have had nobody to tell the story to. Like, oh, the, I didn't think yeah, about it that the girl's way. Like, yeah. <laughs> what if? What if she died? Well, that's a risk we were willing to take. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll cut back on the clues. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I will say, like the style of the movie kind of reminds me of a like an Italian horror film. Like I can imagine this could be a really cool movie if it was like a. a Lucia Fulci movie. Oh god, it'd be gross. And it kind of ends on like it ends. Like, it does. It ends yes. like the beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like it's very uh, visual heavy with very loose threads that tie scenes together. Which is your you know? typical Just, uh, Italian horror movie. It's like yes. how, how we got to get you to, not make sense. Exactly. It's like this it's, is one. We got to get you to the next kill. Yeah. It's exactly yeah, what this is. Yeah, totally. And so to kind of go in somewhat order, because I'm not going to talk about every scene. Yeah. But like if we're talking about the school visually. Um, Pyramid Head looks cool. Oh yes. yeah, I mean, he looks really good. He's, good. He's a highlight of this movie for me. And he goes away as soon as he shows up. <laughs> and um, I and didn't realize how much he like he as soon as he like he kills that one girl, he's gone from the movie. Pretty uh, much, yeah. He yeah. shows up. Yeah, he's in it more in the in the sequel. Is he? Okay. But a uh, little fun fact: uh, Pyramid Head doesn't even show up until the second game. He's oh, not even, I didn't know he's that. He's not in the first game whatsoever. I didn't know that. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. He's a, like, creation for the second It's game. been a while since yeah. I played. I only played the first two, I think. Yeah. Um, But they go throughout the school. I, I do think the whole janitor in the bathroom is very creepy, by the yeah, way. Yeah, because that, if you look at the behind-the-scenes uh of the movie, that's a real dude. It's like barely, I think the only thing that they CGI'd was like the legs. Oh, really? Bent over or bent around backwards, basically. But he's just, it's a dude crawling around. All of seven. And it works. Yeah, yeah. it works because it looks it's a really real good. thing. Yeah. Um, so they end up getting to the church at some point and they meet up and they meet like this girl, Anna, who ends up following her around. Uh, or the, the cop, Anne Rose. Yeah, yeah. She becomes like their best friend somehow. Terrible, terrible acting. It's, uh, um, but... They're all kind of walking around trying to figure this out together. And at one point, they're walking towards the church, and then you hear the sirens yeah. go off. This I scene love, is. Cool. I love. I, actually, I like the scene a lot. Yeah. Yeah. This scene's pretty cool. And even Matt said it too. He's like, man, he's like, that siren goes off. He's like, it gives me the creeps. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. And it is. It's intense. And if they would have used it a little bit better. Yeah. Like, if it would have been an awesome movie, every time that siren went off, you'd be like, oh, man, here oh, it yeah. comes. Just even being out in the streets. Like, oh, can you God. imagine being on, like, Main Street and that yeah. siren goes off and you're like, I and don't that's, know where the hell And that's, go. like, the best part of those games because you're, like, exploring and it's quiet, you know? Mm. And then the, the sirens go off. You're like, oh, God, I got to yeah. get out of here now. Yeah. And so they hear the sirens and they all start running up towards the church. And then, like, Rose stops and just kind of stares around. Um, I guess there's the, um, the other, like, uh, which is, uh, another actress in this movie, uh, Deborah Kara Unger. Okay. She's like, uh, like a witch or something or like the a, main villain kind of. In no, this? she's not the main villain. She's like this, this raggedy old lady. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I know you're talking about. little girl's mom. Yeah. yeah the yeah. other girl's mom. Basically. She's from, uh, did you ever see the game? Yeah. She's awesome in the game. Yeah. And she's also in, uh, your favorite movie Crash. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you. Criterion collection for releasing. Have Crash. you seen Crash? I've not seen Crash. Uh, Dude, I've always wanted to see I, it. I can't oh, wait yeah. to buy it and watch it, but it's never been anywhere like available in the U S to yeah, like, stream yeah. or anything until, until now. Um, um, but yeah, she's apparently like fallen behind or something. And the, the Anna girl throws a rock at her face and is like causing her or calling her a witch or whatever. Yeah. And then I think, uh, Rose goes to like help her. And then that's where pyramid head. Uh, well, yeah. And then, up. so like, Anna's like, come on, let's go. This girl that they picked up. And I don't know why she's so concerned with them. Like, go to the church. Like, Pyramid Head's right there. Like, yeah. whatever. How many yeah. days have you lived in this town? Right. That you're well, gonna, apparently like... it's an eternity because if she die, if she's in the Silent Hill world, or like, I think the idea is like the townspeople, they died in the fire. So they're like living this purgatory. Okay. Yeah, it's like state. a limbo. Yeah, right? a limbo, basically. Yeah. Like That's a, why it doesn't make sense for the cop to be out. Because the whole the whole story, the backstory on this, point, this yeah. town takes place around... Well, it had to be like the it looked like maybe the fifties and under. I, yeah. I couldn't quite like pinpoint a decade on it. Um, yeah, but like, so it doesn't make sense for the cop to be in. But the cop, the cop is in the first game, so I think they're just trying to follow suit and like try to adapt the the first game into this movie. No, I mean, like, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, detective Gucci. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it doesn't I make sense that he would yeah. be his age outside of Silent Hill. Is that his name? Is Detective Gucci? Yeah, I, it's Gucci. That's why so I was like Gucci. More like <laughs> Detective Goofy. <laughs> Good one, dude. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> um, so Pyramid Head is coming up, and he's just killing bodies as they run to the church. Yeah, bodies. And he grabs Anna, and <laughs> this is so Rips her skin off. It, it's this pretty is dis- hardcore. It's disturbing. Yeah. It's, it's okay. It is disturbing. And this, but, uh, go this ahead. is where I'm going to rip on it again. It's rip like the skin off. I'm going <laughs> to. It's like if it was. There's moments that if it was like real. Like, was it CGI? You're disgusting. What? You wanted to get a real body? Yeah, get like a leather face, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, if the if it wasn't CGI and the effects were practical, some of the gore in this would be so disturbing. Yeah, it would be kind of crazy. Like, get like some Hellraiser style gore. Yeah, it, I mean, like the like, what's her name? The way she dies at the end with all the barbed wire. Oh yeah, where it, like squeezes her. Should and be like... like so disturbing, but you're kind of watching it, and it, it feels like you're watching like a video game. So you're able to kind of take your mind out of it. I disagree. I think that it was I don't fine. think it's as there disturbing was, um, as it is. Like as hers it was fine. It was. The, uh, it was one of the uh, like henchmen, like the there's like a dumb looking henchman okay. uh, that is like trying to attack Rose, and then like rips him apart and is like ah, looks kind of silly. Yeah, well, I but I think the Anna thing. Yeah, works. that one is definitely. I think it because works. it happens so quick that you don't have time to like dissect. The yeah, CGI. exactly. Yeah, yeah. and so yeah, after Anna is destroyed, uh, they all get into the <laughs> church to hide out, and then. I don't know. I'm not at this point. I'm not really following a lot of this plot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Um, because from here on out throughout the movie, 
it's like here's a million details and backstories and this yeah. and I'm like I don't yeah I'd rather be playing the game right now right <laughs> uh, so is this the end of the movie right now no is it's this, not because no, they end up hour we're, into the movie like this like, is where the plot begins we're like less than <laughs> we're like less than halfway through this movie no because basically so they get to the church there's multiple church sequences well yeah so they this get is to just the, part one well get me out of this part one <laughs> okay so they go to the they, this is the church and they say she's like I'm missing my little girl right. And then uh, they're like, "Yeah, if the the heart of the darkness is in it sounds the like this is Matt's yeah. drunk history again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the heart of the darkness." <laughs> and she's like, "Do you want to go?" Hospital. And she's like, "Okay, yeah." <laughs> uh, but like, they're like, "Yeah, the heart of the darkness is in the hospital. You have to go to the hospital." So they, you guys are definitely not villains. Take her to the hospital, and then they they think she's a witch because they find out that her little girl looks, looks just, just like, like the yeah. Little girl she's that's like, been "I'm sorry, but we're trying to change her down. ways. Here's your locket back, <gasps> witch." You know, <laughs> yeah. like yeah, just immediately turn on her. Um, and then, then we get our. She goes down, and we get our nurse scene. This is well, the yeah. before the nurse this scene. This is a cool scene. Sybil in the movie. tries like. Why did not? Why didn't the cop jump in the elevator with her? That's it's so. That stupid. was my. That was my issue. The last. She's time like, I just go. I got this. It's like just. I don't and know. And then it's like a yeah, pointless. Like, why are you committing suicide right now? There's so many things she does where I'm like, why did you do that? Why did you do that in this scene? Yeah. Okay. She, I was like, say, she should have gotten the elevator. She yeah. Should, yeah. And then she has a gun that doesn't have any bullets, and in she it. knows it's, there's no bullets. But left they don't know it. Yeah, so, fully back away. So she clicks it to show like there was no bullets. Pretend like you still have bullets in the yeah. gun. Yeah. You still yes. have the upper hand. Yeah, like, don't reveal yeah. it after the fact. Like, yeah, that was stupid. Like, and then she gets practically beat to death. What she what she should have done is like back away into the the elevator and then pull the trigger and you're like ha ha and then hit bitches. The, yeah, hit the, hit the thing. <laughs> <laughs> like the elevator just drops all the way down. But yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so she gets to the bottom. I don't even remember what happens right here when you get down to the bottom of this. Well, this elevator. is where she encounters the nurses, right? Well, oh, yeah, this, this is, is yeah. this is yeah. your other scene where it's like memorize the map so you can get around yeah. the Silent Hill, and it's like she is looking at the hospital map and she's like left, right, left, right, right, left. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right left, 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 right, right. You know, it's like it's like, fi- it's like five minutes later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then she does exactly that, gets down there, and then she encounters the uh, infamous nurse scene, which is great. So yeah, so if you just to paint a little bit of a visual. There's like all these nurses with no faces, um, and it's kind of weird because they nurses they move kind of sexually. It's kind of yeah, like an erotic and, and, kind of move. And that's yeah. like I think a lot of the uh, monsters in the game are supposed to be like sexualized in a way. Okay, it's supposed to be like it's equivalent of like Hellraiser, where it's like pain is our pleasure, you know, right. type, type deal. There's a lot of Hellraiser stuff in this. Yes, well, in especially the this. well this. Uh, uh, to go talk about another movie, this game is partially based off of the last sequence in Jacob's Ladder. Oh, yeah, yeah, being, yeah. When he's being pushed around I like Bernie. Yeah. I just watched Jacob's Ladder this year yeah. again. There's a lot of like scenes where it's like hospital, you know, weird, crazy looking Shaking monsters. your head back, yeah. saying oh, no a bunch of times really yeah. fast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so the nurses are kind of like approaching her until she turns off the light. Well, that's, yeah, again, it's like the game where it's like, they force you to turn off the light or else like the monsters are attracted. Mm, yeah. And so she shines the light and that's when they kind of like activate. It's really cool. Cause then she like sneaks by them. And then one of the nurses, like they can't see her. Yeah. And one of the nurses hits another nurse. And then that nurse thinks it's, um, Rose it's like slashes a, the one nurse. That nurse kills another nurse. Yeah. And it's like a, it's a really cool. well made yeah. scene. I like it. The actress was actually hit in the face. Uh, Oh, it was in really real life during this. <laughs> oh, like, really? One of the nurses. Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, no, but I, I think there's this like thing that they could do with the uh, the overall aesthetic of it, mm-hmm. where they could kind of do something like this, where it's like it's horrific, but it's like sexual. Yeah, you know, or something that is violent, but it's done in such a like giallo kind of uh, mm-hmm. uh, tone that it's like it's beautiful, but it's violent. You know, they could do no, these okay. kind of like yeah. things throughout the movie, but I feel like the movie never does them. Well, I think they try to make the movie as dirty as possible because that's like the game is like very industrialized when they get to this other world and it's very like dark and dingy. And I will say that the movie does sell it. Oh, yeah. It does sell that like I feel like I'm in hell every time that siren goes off. So it does really, I will say as a plus, it does sell that feeling. And there are moments of like really great dread in the movie. And we talked about the pyramid head scene on the stairs. Yeah. Um, where you feel like the characters are ultimately screwed. Yeah, they're you know? in peril. You believe that anybody yeah. could eat it at any moment. Um, I think it's just, I think there's a detachment, though, between the story and our feelings for our main character throughout the movie. I think that was the one thing where it's like you never feel that 
it's hard. Okay, saying it this way, when there's a single character in a movie like this, you never are worried about them because you know they're going to be okay to get to the end of the movie. Yeah. So it's like this nurse scene is really cool, but you know they're going to be fine because they got to get to the end of the movie. Right, right. Like, yeah, so there's no threat. There's no threat. Like, you ever Maybe. see, like, Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio? No. Mm-hmm. Don't spoil it. Well, I'm not. It's not a spoiler alert. It's just that the but he, at the he end, spends ninety percent of that movie by himself. Yeah. So any threat that he's encountered, oh, okay, yeah. you're gonna be like, well, of course he's gonna survive this bear attack. He's, he's, he's the only got, character. He's the only character left. Yeah. So he's got to get to the end. Yeah, yeah. it's like so, if Tom Hanks died in the first fifteen minutes. Castaway, you're yeah. like, what? Yeah. yeah, and that's why, like, you see, like in horror films and slasher films, that's the final girl trope is because we've narrowed it down. We've narrowed you down the, the victim of... pool down to one person, yeah. and now we're sitting at the last twenty minutes of this movie. And this person could die. And that's why it's tough to like kind of adapt this movie into a, or this video game into a movie because you're literally only following one character. And that's a bummer because um, I, I never saw the movie. I heard it's not very good, unfortunately. But Wes Craven did a movie called uh, My Soul to Take. Okay. Oh, okay. And it was one of the last films he did. And the big hype around it was he was like, I only Anybody. want to cast people that have not been in any other movies. Okay. So in that way, you're not guessing who's going to make it to the end. And right. it's like, and I tried to make the movie, so you can't really figure out who the main character is. So yeah. Like, That's genius. Yeah. And unfortunately, the movie I heard was not very good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Twist ending. <laughs> but really good idea. Like, yeah. that should be that way. Yeah. You shouldn't have Silent Hill starring Brad Pitt. And you're like, well, I know Brad Pitt's going to Yeah, win. they paid him a crap ton of money. He's, of course, going to make it to the end. Yeah. But. And I would say, like, because of saying all, because saying all that, uh, the weight of this movie relies so hev- heavily on the visuals. Yeah. So uh, that's why I feel like the nurse scene's really cool because you can feel like the fear of it, but it's something practical. You're able to draw yourself into it. Yeah. And anytime she's getting chased by like uh, the, da- the dancing babies at yeah. uh, <laughs> Uga Chaka, yeah. Uga Chaka. Uh, it's like it's not as scary. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like yeah, they look like cartoons. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry the guys. Dancing baby from Ally McBeal. Yeah, the dancing baby from <laughs> Ally McBeal. Like. Um, Mignonish from Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the, the lights on his eyes <laughs> looking around. This movie is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she ends up escaping the nurses. And then we have like a whole like explanation and scene. And this is where you get your big like, here's here's the story of Silent Hill. Yeah, which yeah. we talked you haven't been, about. Because you haven't been watching this movie for the last hour and 45 minutes. And he pretty much tell you why it, um, it, it rains ash all the time. And they tell you pretty much all the backstory about yeah. this character. Um, which I mean, if you condense it, what's her story? The little Alyssa's Alyssa's the bad girl, right? Uh, I mean, not I, the bad girl. I guess it's I'm like sorry. it's like your typical like revenge. I guess I guess they burn her for for being a witch or something. Yeah, and then she ultimately survives, right? Like that's her. Yeah, order. she's yeah, because like she's basically in a like, um, burn. third degree burns, covered in third degree burns. Yeah, so it's like her pain becomes like a magic of some sort or yeah, whatever. Yes, so I think they say like her pain becomes their suffering. Yeah. Is that what it is? I essentially It's a good line. Yeah. Um but, but she, yeah, she like basically dark her which is like the little kid that's yeah. walking around. She's the one who's like, like he's like you're all going to die down here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So from? Resident Evil. Oh yeah. <laughs> so is the little girl even real? She's like a, basically like a splinter off of like Yeah. The, but so is she like even real? Like, technically no. I technically mean, I guess not, not it's, right? It's yeah. the one that's supposed to be real is the one that got burned in, yeah. in the gurney at the end or like in the bed at the end basically. Um and and, and, and like honestly the uh the story mechanics behind this is real strange too because like that's why playing it, it, off the end of the movie yeah. she walks away with this little girl but can't leave the limbo of Silent Hill even though there's yeah. no like negative part to it at the end or mm-hmm. ne- like whatever like the hell. Mm-hmm. Uh thing like at that, the end yeah uh, but like she's walking around with this little girl and they're just stuck in like that it's like the end of that twilight zone episode from the movie oh yeah where they're just walking around in a cloud you yeah. know with yeah. little boy and yeah. he's like what happened he's like i wish them all away <laughs> and it's like <laughs> they're just walking yeah. around in a cloud um yeah. but the mechanics of that it's like you think like they would the little girl would have enough power in her to be like all we right we're gonna go back to the true. real world which that's what doesn't make any sense because she escaped the real world in the first place and then they adopted her i think she's supposed to be like a uh See, this is where it gets so confusing because yeah. I thought she was like a reincarnation of this girl. Or something. I think it's actually her. Oh, is it? I thought so. Yeah, yeah I gets, thought it was her. Yeah. That, okay. well, you said it. You just said she's a splinter of. Well, what yeah, I she guess was. I guess she's the good version then because the one that's like the evil who's like doing like the crazy jittery. Yeah, like that's supposed to be like the darker version that causes all the pain and suffering. Yeah. you know. And this is why I'm confused because yeah. it's like, is she? Is this little girl the good one? Is she even real, or if she just kind of like yeah. the? 
uh, just a portion this of what is, this girl yeah. was. And this is why I have to dock points off this movie is because it's like a pretty good adaptation, but the story is so freaking confusing. But it, it also comes from over explaining. Yeah. When it's 100%. like, exactly. if you would have left this out, yeah. I could still kind of like piece I would, together. I could walk away with my own interpretation of it yeah, and piece it together. When you start calling her Cheryl, Alessa, whatever. Cheryl. Yeah, and you got the same. <laughs> And you got the same exact actress playing all these roles. It's like, I am so freaking it's lost very right confusing. Now. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. So at this point, Rose goes back to the church, right? Yeah. So and this is where they're doing like a ritual. This is like our last act of the movie, pretty much. And the cop is tied to a ladder. And she's, she's at the top of a ladder. And they kind of like leverage it down. So yeah. she's on top of a fire. She's... Uh, Roasting, basically. Yeah, and yeah. it's disturbing, man. It's a gross. This scene. is the most. I think. This I think is the this most is disturbing thing. The in the, movie. the reaction from Cheryl is one of the most genuine reactions. I would probably react the same way. You're right. If I uh, saw this, this police officer just catch on fire. Yeah, it's brutal. Ah! So, and then they're gonna do the same thing to Alyssa. Yeah, and then I, I feel like this, like this last 15 minutes right here. Is just like I don't know what's going on. We have to end the movie. We're way too yeah, long. Yeah, because like the little girl somehow gets inside of the mom, and uh, yeah, this is that like, way she can get into the church. But it's all banked on like if she gets stabbed or not. <laughs> yeah, for her to come out of the mom and then to be able to take yeah, over the church. It pours it's out so like weird. The blood pours out. Of yeah. Her. Um. In then this is what I mean. Like as far as like this ending could be really disturbing, yeah. which we've seen in like what's. Fill in Hellraiser sequel or original yeah. here, right? Yeah. Like with all the barbed wire going around killing everybody, this could be really brutal and disgusting yeah. and disturbing, but it comes off so kind of like goofy and like animated because the CGI is all over the they place. I don't mind a, it. They needed to have the guy with the, the chains on his face in the first Hellraiser. Yeah. He says, Jesus, where? <laughs> yeah. The guys with CDs in their mouths. Yeah. And it's Kanye the- West single. <laughs> Compact, Kanye West, where that band. come from? Just name that song. It's like Jesus wept. Oh yeah. yes, okay, yeah. good. I just I thought that, okay. <laughs> good I, was, I was stretching really far. It was for a good it. tie. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> so why do the chains? Where do the, Where does this come from? That evokes the. I know Rose's blood, like it pours it, out and starts melting the or turning into like other world or whatever. And then that's what like I guess gets the chains going. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. Honestly, what I'm getting at is that this little girl. Uh, Sent the portion of her, whatever, in like as a, another little girl out to the real world to bring somebody real in. Okay. So that it's she like a could trick. Agent. So wait, hold on, let me get this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> shut your damn mouth. Shut your damn mouth when <laughs> we get through this. Uh, she sends a little girl out in the real world so they can bring back another human into the Silent Hill so she can go into that human. That human could go into the church and she could get the rest of the people that are in Silent Hill and God. kill them. Wow. She should have just like flat out said, hey, can I use your body real quick? To- yeah. So it's like this really long plot to bring the lead actress, lead character into the story just so they can get to this final third. Well, yeah. And then they so she can kill the rest of the people in the church. Well, it doesn't make any sense. So then the girls come by and they're one now. Yeah. And Rose takes Alyssa. They get out of there. Everybody's dying in the church. They're all dead, yeah. They oh, go right, home. When she covers her eyes, like, after, like, the 10th <laughs> guy dies, she's like, close your eyes. I was like, nah, she's kind of screwed for yeah, life, right? Yeah, I she, mean, she's in it now. Nine yeah. is no different than 10 at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they escape, and they end up heading home. And this is really cool. I like the way this is done. Because Sean Bean's at home, and they're coming home, and it kind of looks like they're in the same house. Yeah. yeah. Which they are but they're in different dimensions. And the movie ends with basically Sean Bean in the real world and then Rose and Alyssa are still yeah. in Silent Hill. It, it ends, it's a really creepy yeah. ending. Yeah. It's very it ends with Sean Bean making his Match.com profile and then it's credits. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I know it's only been four hours. <laughs> Somebody's free again. <laughs> um, but yeah, what was the whole point of this? If Alyssa was just going to keep her in Silent Hill and go... Yes. Why did Alyssa even go out in the first place if she's still... It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I don't understand. Yes. Also, I feel like she already has the power to begin with to, to cause all this chaos because obviously they run away whenever there's a siren. Yeah. You know, why yeah. did she just conjure up more so than she already does? It like, doesn't... Well, and, and, and to be honest, like as convoluted as this ending is, it is cool. It's a very creepy ending. Phase yeah. of Black. Like, oh man, that's yeah. the end of this movie. It is a, yeah, it is a dark ending. Yeah. So that's Silent Hill. Before we start like discussing what we think about it, 31% Rotten Tomatoes. Hanto, what would you give it? I'd give it uh, high 40s, maybe 50%. Okay. All right. 
Matt? Yeah, I'd give it like something close to that. Like I'd say, like <laughs> <reaction>? honestly, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would actually uh, be pretty close at around like the forties. I would. This think, is like, like as I was. As high I was gonna 40s. say forty-eight. So yeah, yeah. 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 As far as ad- video game ad- adaptations go, this is like this is as good as it gets. Yeah, yeah. I just I think the only thing that hurts this movie is the runtime. Like, length. Well, is. I, honestly, I don't think that's the only thing that hurts this movie. I Writing. Think it's is my, definitely. I I really feel like coming out of it, I was like the CGI is not very good. Uh, the story makes no sense at times, and it needs to be uh, tighter, which would I would feel like would create a, a tighter runtime. Yeah. yeah. Um, See, but like I feel like it's pretty much on the point. There's some scary moments in it, and yeah. it's not like I'd probably rewatch it later on in the future and yeah. recommend it to people. But CGI uh, is not enough for me. It like it gets by with how many practical effects. Like the I can let it get by with the terrible CGI at times, okay. just because it's like set in the dark, so I can. Get it gets by. a bit, yeah. But it's just the writing is not all there, and the length is way too long. Yeah, I, yeah. If you cut out like a good twenty, twenty five minutes, you could have a really like, yeah, it's a good recommendation. Yeah. Would I watch it again? Yeah, because I bought it. Yeah, but I would too. That, I also bought it. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think out of the three movies we did this month, I feel like it goes in order for me: Mortal Kombat, then Tomb Raider, then Silent Hill being the best. Okay. Um, oh, I see. I, I think like, Matt would agree. No, really? Yeah, I would honestly. Uh, Knocking on the CGI so much, I would have to say I really enjoyed Tomb Raider, which I didn't think I was going to, for the practicalness of it and the stunts yeah. and the fact and okay. like I feel like they were really trying to like make that into something that wasn't just a video game adaptation. So yours goes Mortal Kombat, Silent Hill, then Tomb Raider, from worst from, to best. Yeah, 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 from worst to best. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what I asked you. I don't know why you looked at me no, like that. I don't know. I don't know what you said. I thought you said that I agreed with what. Yours was was that Silent Hill was your your favorite. Silent Hill was my favorite of the three. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you just said yours was Tomb Raider, dude. Are you catching on to like? I feel like he's doing word plays and I think it's messing. Is. I think he is. Okay. I'm saying Tomb Raider's the best. Silent Hill, Mortal Kombat. Best All three worst. of those are the best. Hanto <laughs> <laughs> Brothers. Uh, Mortal Kombat. Even though I gave it a lower score uh, at the end of the episode, Mortal Kombat because I feel like it's more watchable than this. Really. Uh, Mortal Kombat, Silent Hill, Laura Croft. Laura Croft is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, it's terrible. The worst movie? Why? Well, I, I feel like, okay. I, I you're going to ask him why? I'm like, refer to the episode no, we recorded. Honestly, <laughs> you didn't. And I'm going to call you out for it. I, I talked about it in the episode. I hated the movie. I feel like you didn't really, like, I didn't really I did, feel I that you hated it. it. I just need to see it. Well, it's the ongoing trend of I love talking about movies. So I was having a blast talking about it. Yeah. Watching it alone. It was awful. But I feel like you weren't, like, I feel like I didn't get it, like, why is this one of the worst movies you've ever seen? No, it's terrible. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, now you put it that way. I didn't think about it like that. <laughs> really broke it down. <laughs> why was it bad? Because it's terrible. Yeah. You know what? what? Compile Just, your thoughts, yeah. and you can tell us when we play I, the I, video I'm actually Refer to this episode in the previous episode on why I hate Laura Croft and Tomb Raider. <laughs> so refer to every episode of Cinema And Cold. also follow me on uh, Letterboxd, because I give it <laughs> half a star, I think. <laughs> Like, whatever. Um, so that's going to wrap up our video game adaption month. Uh, we look forward to next month because February is Denzel Washington month. DW Have month. Have we figured out what movies we're doing? Yes, we're doing, I, I will tell you, in yeah. order. Ricochet, Training Day, and Inside Man. Why would you spoil it? Because Why not? we got to get people hyped up. Okay, that's fine. I uh, thought what happened to like and every, then, at the end of the episode we always say like hey this is what we're covering next week oh. whatever yeah and to uh, something I am gonna watch too is that new Denzel comes out in a couple weeks yeah with is uh, streaming Jared Leto yeah it'll be on HBO okay yeah so. I honestly I I think I'm going to do my own homework for February and just go through and just watch a ton of his filmography I'm gonna, which I've seen a good chunk I'm of it I just rewatch Man on it. Fire because that movie rules yeah Man on Fire is when I want to rewatch um, but yeah I I've never seen Devil in the Blue Dress which I've always I've wanted actually to see. never seen that yeah. And Matt's Fallen. probably gonna watch. Is that new one? Yeah, I haven't seen Fallen. I've always wanted to watch Fallen. Fallen's good. Don't get the yeah. plot is better than the movie. Okay. Yeah, well, I second that. Yeah, it's an awesome concept. Yeah. It's an okay movie. Yeah. Okay, I know the ending. I remember. It's got John Goodman in it. Yeah. yeah. No, and Denzel Washington's in it too. Oh, he is. Oh. Yeah. Okay, even better to really got, watch it. And it's got uh, <laughs> and it's got Casey Jones in it. Uh, El- Elias Cotius. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in it. Too. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. So. Oh, you should check it out too. Oh, I will. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. That's going to wrap up our month. Um, if you have any requests for further months, uh, you can hit us up on Facebook or Honto. You can email us at cinemacoldpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, you can also find all of our episodes on Spotify as they're getting loaded up by Honto himself. And uh, we have a bunch of videos that we're trying to upload onto YouTube, YouTube. too. 
uh, some more visual medium for you guys. Uh, but thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. We're hoping you're having a good year. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Honto. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>